Mr. Gandhi to come up on the stage for the interactive session. And let this interactive session create a path for change in our lives. Please give him a round of applause, guys. Thank you. Welcome, sir. How are you? I'm good. Start you, you want me to start? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? I've not I've not come here dressed in my normal uniform. Uh, there's a logic to that. Uh, I've come here not really to tell you what I think. I've come here more to understand what you expect from people like us. Um, I want to, so of course I'm not, it's not going to be one way, it's going to be two way. Um, I will put in what I think in the middle, but I'm much more interested in trying to understand what are the type of things that we should be focusing on, what are the type of things that are disturbing you, what are the type of things where we can work together to make your life easier. Uh, there are a couple of central themes that I would like to discuss. So one, of course, uh, is jobs and the job crisis in our country. And two is the type of situation you're faced with in your education system. That would be the broad theme of what I would be talking, but I'm much more here to listen, so you can start. Final thing, of course, you'll have questions for me. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you want me to answer in English, ask me in English. If you want me to answer in Hindi, ask me in Hindi. I don't speak Tamil and some other languages, so uh, my friends from the south, you'll have, to, you'll have to ask me in English. Go ahead. So there had been a lot of questions. Bahut sare questions hai, sabke bahut sare prashn, uttar cha, sab log bahut chaate ki aap unki problems ka solution batayein. So, lekin hum kuch hi questions le paaye hai. It does not mean ki baakiyo ke questions consider nahi hoi hai. Because we have constraint of time, so kuch okay questions address honge. So please guys, make use of this movement. Jo poochna hai, poochye, because wo hum sab students ka haq hai. Right? Am I right? So the first question is from Bhavishya Mehta, Delhi School of Economics. Bhavishya, are you here? Bhavishya. Good morning. I am from Delhi School of Economics, currently pursuing MA Economics. Sir, I have done my graduation from Hindu and there we used to have like parliamentary system in student union. And I am the former Prime Minister of Hindu College. So... <laughs> sir, ek baat kehna that's, that's pretty impressive. Sir, uh, mera naam can, I, can I ask you yeah, just sure. one thing, you see, when you are my age yes, sir. and you are talking to students, they call you sir, you feel uncomfortable. I'll tell you why. Because I'm at that age where, you know, I'm, there's a gap between me and you. And I remember, I remember, I remember that place. So I remember when people like me used to come and I used to say sir. So call me by my first name. Call me Rahul. That makes me more comfortable. So, Mr. Prime Minister, go ahead, ask me the question. Sir, my name is Bhavishya and I'm quite hopeful I'm talking to the next Prime Minister of our country. So, sir, my question is that the present government, like they have reduced the higher education budget. The UGC budget has been cut down almost to the tune of 55%. And on the other hand, we see like many other institutions being created in other arenas. A higher education financing agency has been created. So what agency is doing? They are saying that central institutes, their members, and loans. 
so these loans will in the long run change the entire system of our education from the public funded grant base to a loan base because ye loans wapas pay karne padenge ultimately the burden will fall on all students sab pe hum pe burden aayega students pe kyunki fees hi zyada hogi college ko paisa generate zyada karna padega so my question is sir the present situation of education and higher education especially the funding uski dasha bahut hi chinta nahi hai aur sir aap isko kaise ek nayi disha de sakte hain आपने हिंदी में भी बोला अंग्रेजी में भी बोला तो मतलब दोनों में दोनों में जवाब दू मिक्स्ड ठीक है देखिए पिछले पांच साल में द गवर्नमेंट इज फुगिवन थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीस बैंक लोन्स ऑफ 15 to 20 big businessmen let me give you a sense of what 3 lakh 50000 crores is 3 lakh 50000 crores is approximately 10 years of manrega now i got a question for you 3 lakh 50000 crores is given for 15 is for given for 15 people millions of students take bank loans how many of your bank loans have been figure, forgiven oh, why are you quiet have they been forgiven no so we have massive bank loans of 15 of the richest people in the country being forgiven but when farmers ask for forgiveness of the bank loans the government says no way students of course you don't ask i don't know why you don't ask but you don't ask so the question is why is everything being done for 15 20 people look at your cell phones three four companies own the entire architecture look at the port infrastructure one company owns it so there is a concentration of wealth taking place in india and privatization is basically designed to help those 15 20 30 people and the idea is very simple the state should not pay for your education you should pay for your education and the money you pay for your education should go to those 15 20 people and we are fundamentally against that we are absolutely 100% certain that the state must pay for large parts of your education the state must support your education and much more money should be going into the education budget than is going into it today and you can see a steep decline in the amount of money that is going into education today with compared to when we were in government it's a massive decline you can also look at the numbers and you will see that when we were in power in upa we opened more than 20 24 universities do you know how many universities have been opened over the last 5 years one 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 yeah so so that's the point we believe that government has to support education government must support healthcare because without these two we are not moving forward and the bjp is convinced that you can use private industry to support education and privatization is the key to education we don't believe that that's broadly <laughs> and and then when i say the government should support i mean making bank loans easier scholarships adding numbers of universities and colleges pushing school enrollment so all these numbers if you look across you'll see that every single one of these numbers has fallen in the bjp regime uh, so we have next thank you so much sir we have next question from kapil from campus law center kapil are you here please raise your hand why why, why have you disappeared there well, come here Where's Kapil? 
यस गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू गुड आफ्टरनून राहुल जी गुड आफ्टरनून सर मेरा आपसे सवाल था पिछले सौ सालों से हमारे देश में बहुत अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटीज अलीगढ़ इलाहाबाद पटना डी यू जे एन यू बहुत से हम सब स्टूडेंट्स के भविष्य का निर्माण करने में लगी हुई हैं लेकिन पिछले दिनों सुनने में आया कि ये सरकार ने जो यूनिवर्सिटी अभी अस्तित्व में ही नहीं है उसको सर्वश्रेष्ठ यूनिवर्सिटी का इन्होंने टैग दिया तो आप इसको किस नज़र से देखते हैं देखिए आज अगर आप उन पंद्रह बीस तीस चालीस बड़े उद्योगपतियों में से हैं तो आपको जो टैग चाहिए आपको मिल जाएगा आपको आपको आईआईटी का टैग चाहिए आपको आईआईटी का टैग मिल जाएगा आपको एमआईटी का हार्वर्ड का टैग चाहिए आपको हार्वर्ड एमआईटी का टैग मिल जाएगा तो जब आप आईआईटी को देखते हैं आईआईटी का जो रेप्यूटेशन बना है पूरी दुनिया में बना है वो दो साल में नहीं बना है और गलत फहमी नहीं होनी चाहिए आईआईटी का जो टैग बना है सिर्फ आईआईटी के प्रोफेसर्स और आईआईटी के टीचर्स और आईआईटी के इंस्ट्रक्शन इंस्ट्रक्टर्स से नहीं बना है आईआईटी के स्टूडेंट्स ने आईआईटी के टैग को बनाया है रियलिटी है मैंने जब भी आई की बात होती है बाहर से लोग आते हैं तो मुझे कहते हैं कि हम आईआईटी के स्टूडेंट्स से इंप्रेस होते हैं किसी ने मुझे यह नहीं कहा कि मैं आईआईटी के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर से इंप्रेस हूं या आईआईटी की बिल्डिंग से इंप्रेस हूं सब कहते हैं भैया मैं तो आईआईटी के जो स्टूडेंट्स निकल के आते हैं मैं उनसे इंप्रेस हूं और उस इंस्टीट्यूशन में तो भैया एक स्टूडेंट आया नहीं तो IIT के IIT के बारे में अगर आप मुझे पूछें IIT आई टी इज ए नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग वर्ल्ड क्लास स्टूडेंट टूडे एंड इट इज डूइंग एक्सेप्शनल जॉब बट द आई आई टी ऑफ टूडे हैज टू बी ए कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर वी हैव टू थिंक ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग द आई आई टीज into knowledge centers into knowledge networks and the way we do that very simple the only way to do that is by giving them autonomy by telling them you are responsible for what you are going to do the government is not going to impose ideas on you the government is not going to put pressure on you the government is going to give you the resources you need it is for your students your teachers your professors to decide what iit should be doing what iit should be pushing now this is a completely different philosophy aaj aap kisi bhi institution mein pooch lijiye vice chancellors ideological log baithaye ja rahe hain kisi se bhi aap pooch lijiye vice chancellor ek sangathan ke ideological log एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक यूनिवर्सिटीज कॉलेजेस में बैठाए जा रहे हैं उनको जो ग्लोबल विजन होता है जो स्टूडेंट्स की फीलिंग्स होती हैं उससे कुछ लेना देना नहीं उनको सिर्फ अपनी आइडियोलॉजी से लेना देना है और वो चाहते हैं कि हिंदुस्तान का एजुकेशन सिस्टम उनका औजार बन जाए and that is frankly an insult to you it is a massive insult to you because the education of education system of india should only be the instrument of the youngsters of india it should be nothing else it should not be the instrument of one organization it should not be the instrument uh, of some ideology it should be the instrument of you people it is your it belongs to you so our our response our response is to give independence to these institutions to give empowerment to these institutions and our job is to make sure you have the funding you require to make sure that you are working within a basic principle our job is not to define exactly what you are supposed to do that's your job that is the difference between the two approaches
next we have Shruti Gautam from North Campus. Shruti Gautam. Good morning, Rahul sir. Sir. Where are you? Right, right, right. Okay. Hello, sir. There are lights here, so. Sir, my name is Shruti Gautam and I am doing PhD from Delhi University. Sir, my question is for those young people who give their own knowledge and say them as a soldier. But in the government, they don't get the knowledge of the soldiers. Sir, you are our leader. We are the ones who keep the knowledge of the soldiers. They are the ones who keep the knowledge of the soldiers. I am the one who keeps the knowledge of the soldiers. पैरामिलिट्रीज को जो शहीद का दर्जा नहीं मिलता है मिलना चाहिए और हमारी सरकार आएगी तो मिलेगा एक्चुअली अगर आप देखें और मेरा काफी पैरामिलिट्री से काफी कांटेक्ट रहता है क्योंकि मेरे सिक्योरिटी वाले सब पैरामिलिट्री से आते हैं अगर आप देखें तो जो हमारे पैरामिलिट्रीज के सोल्जर्स हैं सी आर पी एफ बी एस एफ इनकी कैजुअलिटी ज्यादा होती हैं मगर इनको इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सपोर्ट कम मिलती है और यह सही बात नहीं तो आपने बहुत सही चीज उठाई है उनको शहीद का दर्जा मिलना चाहिए और मिलेगा नेक्स्ट वी हैव पीयूष चौधरी फ्रॉम दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी पीयूष Piyush Chaudhary. We'll, we will do that. Let's just go to give, Piyush. Give them the mic, please. Please give Piyush mic. Piyush, please ask your question. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Rahul. Hi. Uh, my name is Piyush Chaudhary. And, uh, nice to meet you. Is it working? Yeah. It's working. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm a research student at the University of Delhi, and I'm also working as a guest lecturer at Delhi University. I'm teaching at JMC, Jesus and Mary College. So my question is that what about Piyush, this? Piyush, uh, mic please, thoda pass, rakhe baat kariye. Yeah, right. Aapki awaz nahi aa rahi hai. So sir, my question is that what about the uh, condition of the ad hoc lecturers that we have? Because we guys have to work with in a very, you know, in difficult conditions. Piyush, so how is Congress going to just hold how is here. Congress Please. going to uh, work upon the situation of the ad hocs of the guest lecturers? Hello. Because hello, it ultimately hello. affects the students also, the conditions in which we are living. So this is my question. The the uh, simple thing is how much money do you put into education? When you're when you're saying how do you think about guest lecturers? You can only solve that problem of guest lecturers, make them permanent, if you're putting in more money into the education system. So our view is that every single teacher in this country, every single professor in this country should have a certain comfort in his life. He must not feel uncertainty. So we would try and push to make sure that this ad hoc lecturer, ad hoc teacher business is changed and you get a permanent position. To do that, you have to put in more money. Currently, the amount of money the BJP government is putting into education, you simply can't achieve that. So the first step is to transform the way we think about education in the budget. And that is something that we're committed to. Yeah. Next, we have Mehek Haider from Jesus and Mary College. Please give the mic to Mehek. Mic check, Mehek. Please check the mic. The work it is not working. Hello. 
good good afternoon mr rahul so um, we are seeing a massive rise in the right wing politics all over uh, the nations of th in this world including india so how does congress plan to tackle this right wing rise the right wing why why do you think you are seeing a right wing rise what is your what is your sense what is the is what is the reason behind it i mean uh, even in india we are seeing that uh, not this year this year we saw congress win elections in three major states and uh, but uh, over the past three years bjp has been winning in a lot of states then uh, uh, in us we have the trump uh, the trump um, government yeah. and uh, we also have putin in uh, russia and we have in different countries we have a lot of right wing we see a rise in the right wing politics in the ideology of do the you, right wing politics do you feel do you feel the level of anger in india is increasing or decreasing increasing definitely increasing and everybody feels that that the level of anger is rising in india <laughs> why do you think the level of anger is rising in india that's it who said that what did he say no jobs you see if you look at all these countries if you look at india you look at america you look at europe the central problem is that none of these countries are able to give jobs to their youngsters and this is a problem in india you are you are educated at the highest level but i'm sorry to tell you you are entering a world where it will not be easy for you to get a job it's going to be difficult and that is why you are seeing anger which is rising and the right wing is utilizing that anger the only solution the only solution to this and i keep repeating it the only solution to this is that india starts to understand that it has a job crisis and actually starts to work to resolve that job crisis simple thing i'll tell you for all the make in india all that stuff our main opponent is china you look at your phones look at your shoes look at your jacket look behind it you'll have made in china written there every time you see that line remember that that job could have either gone to indians or could have gone to china and we are simply refusing and our government is refusing to accept that we have a massive crisis and a potential disaster in front of us and it is our duty your duty my duty to first accept that we have a job crisis and then second to get india to work to actually resolve this crisis which is very possible i have no doubt in my mind not one inch one centimeter that china cannot be challenged and overtaken by this country i have i do not believe that i am absolutely convinced if this country turns around and says bhaiya hame ye kaam karna hai aur jaise gandhi ji kehte the agar sab logon ne man bana liya to is desh ko koi nahi hara sakta hai koi piche nahi kar sakta but बट हमारी जो सरकार है वो एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं करना चाहती है वो एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं करना चाहती है कि जॉब क्राइसिस है सो फर्स्ट स्टेप इज एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम सेकंड स्टेप इज टू गैल्वनाइज एवरीबॉडी एंड सेल वी हैव टू फाइट दिस प्रॉब्लम सो दैट इज वेयर आई हैव अ इश्यू विद दम हैज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एवर कम and had a conversation with you like this has it ever happened now i'm coming here right you can ask me unpleasant questions you can say to me you can because i am i am i fully understand that there might be people here who might have questions for me that would be difficult to answer i'm coming here because i want to communicate with you i want to understand what are the questions going to come our prime minister don't do that i've said him i've said to him 50 times please come and debate with me debate with me on rafael debate with me on corruption debate with me 
डिबेट विद मी ऑन जॉब डिबेट विद मी ऑन डिफेंस एनी थिंग यू वॉन्ट कम बट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर रिफ्यूज इज फॉर गेट मी हु एम आई नो बडी Why doesn't he come and stand in front of you here and say, "Students of India, come, let's talk." Why doesn't he say that as Prime Minister of this country, I'm facing a challenge? The challenge is that we are not able to produce jobs, and I need your help, your commitment to work with me to solve this problem. Why doesn't he say that? Because that's really what the Prime Minister is supposed to do. The Prime Minister is not supposed to come and lecture you on what he thinks. the prime minister is supposed to inspire you and make you feel yes i can actually do this job i'm going to work with this man we're going to get it done that's what the prime minister is supposed to do right so what is happening is we're making excuses we're sitting there as a country and we're making excuses there's no job crisis there's no farm crisis there's no education crisis there's no health crisis and we're wasting time and what's important for you to understand the future is not ours the future is yours this country is going to belong to you not to us and so you have a responsibility towards this country because you are the people who's going to actually move this country forward and you are very capable inspiring people and we need to understand and utilize your passion your skills your understanding to move this country forward i'm sorry i got a bit worked up because i think about this thing you know do you know how many jobs india produces government figures government figures do you know how many jobs india produces every 24 hours look at this 450 you see this group of people here 1.2 billion people this group here is how many jobs the whole country is producing finance ministry figures not rahul gandhi in parliament lok sabha now in the same 24 hours china who i'm absolutely convinced we can move ahead of produces 50000 we produce 450 they produce 50000 and the prime minister doesn't seem to think this is a problem mohan so next we have livingston gangme zakir hussain college livingston can you please raise your hand hello Uh, hello hi rohozi uh, how are you uh, i'm very good where where are you from uh, i am actually from assam okay uh, and now i'm currently studying in uh, pursuing my ba philosophy from zakir hussain delhi college how so, you feeling about how you feeling about what's going on in assam uh, i'm really uh not satisfied with the current government out there too and the gober uh, current government government here in the central too but uh, my question is uh, according to ugc as of 6 september 2017 there are 805 units universities in india with a break up of 47 central universities and 370 state universities of which there are only 10 central uh, universities in northeastern state total of 8 state and 13 state universities uh such uh, lack of uh, higher institution are forcing us student of northeastern student uh, people to uh move to different parts of india in order to pursue a higher education so uh, leg, uh there is clearly a deprivation of uh, higher education institution in northern india even the 10 central university was uh, created during the upa government but now my question is as you are the president of all india uh, congress and if can you or we appeal to you to solve the uh, this massive crisis of Uh, student migration from the northern state if by creating a uh, more central universities in uh, northern state in the if you if this party score as majority in the upcoming lok sabha election well you can tell all your friends in the northeast 
that I'm absolutely committed, 100% committed to increasing the number of higher education institutions in the Northeast. Yes, I'm very satisfied, sir. Rahul sir, we have a like very informal question with you now. Okay. So like as students, we are in the process of making memories in college. So what is one of the, you know, striking memory or one of the thing which you remind, which reminds you of Delhi campus or anything like that, which you want to share with all of us? Because thoda mohal garam. I mean, I remember, I remember getting ragged in St. Stephen's near the big tree there. So that, that was a memory there. And I remember my professor of history uh, giving us some, giving up some lectures, giving us some lectures in um, St. Stephen's College. Uh, that was that was interesting. He had some he had some particular ideas, different type of ideas. Um, that was that was when I was at Stephen's. When I went to the United States. Uh, I got a quite a cultural shock when I went to American universities. I, I was in Harvard University and I was shocked at how aggressively they asked questions and how the teacher was or the professor was almost 24-7 under attack and he had to be very careful what he said compared to our history professor who Everybody in the class basically listened to, believed, and didn't really question. So I, I saw that big difference. Um, those would be the two. And one more thing. What are your views about freedom of speech in academia? Like, if we consider the current scenario, so freedom of speech is something I think we all students launch for that. Because that is the pehchan of Delhi University, we can say. I think freedom of speech and freedom of expression, I'm 100% for that. Students say, sometimes students say things that are not absolutely correct. Fine, you're allowed to make mistakes. That's why you're called youngsters. That's why you're called students. I draw the line where you start behaving violently. So if you're saying something, no matter how unpleasant, it's okay. But if you are threatening people, beating them up, bullying them, bashing them up, then I draw the line. So for me, freedom of expression, as long as it's verbal, as long as it's expressed uh, in a non-violent, in a gentle way, I'm okay with it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Also, we request you all to be crisp and brief with the questions as we have time constraint. Sir, you have talked about St. Stephen's College, so the next question is from St. Stephen's College. Kunwar S. Singh. I request Kunwar S. Singh to please stand up. Please uh, give Hello, him the mic. Hello, Mic. Hello. Thank you. Hi, sir. Hello. Hello, Rahul, sir. Sir, so I have a question and two small grievances. And I, as you are my leader, so I expect you to solve them. So my question is, should education be more student-centric with integration of civil, moral, and ethical values inculcated in our curriculum system? And sir, two small grievances, which I would like. Sir, I would request you to please tell Kaushal, sir, to be mo a little bit more accessible to students like me. Oh, oh. Poor, you know, I tell him that, but he, he has thousands and thousands and thousands of phone calls that he, phone calls that he receives. I will tell him. I will tell him uh, to be more accessible, but he does have a lot of pressure, the poor fellow. And sir, the last thing is, uh, your college invite, you agreed to the students of our college to come to our college three years back, then we asked you again last year, and you said you'll come this year. So now, again, re-extending the invitation to you to please do come to your alma mater. Okay. Thank you. So, sorry, what was your, your first point was? Sir, so should education be more student-centric yeah. with integration of civil, moral, and ethical values in the current curriculum? I think, I think education should be empowering for students. It should allow them to think out of the box. It should make them comfortable of making mistakes. They should feel that, you know, you can make a mistake and learn from the mistake. So it should be forgiving 
and it should be empowering. I don't believe in a rigid structure where every student is told, you know, this is what you're going to think, this is what you're going to do. I think you're actually the strength of our country. And we need to make you feel empowered, make you feel as if you are a very capable, effective person. We must not crush your spirit. And sir, one last thing. I have this small little research paper which I would like to give you. Come, the come, give. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I'll tell him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Mohil Singla from Hindu College. Mohil, can you just give him a bike? Thank you. Good morning. So that, that's the competition. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you, sir? I'm well. Yeah, sir. Majuda sir, Majuda Sarkari. One sec. Relax, relax. Don't worry. Majuda Sarkari Nitiyo ke saath, aaj uch shiksha, aaj uch shiksha ke kehar hamare samne hai, aur iska iska khatra hamay. हमारे नौजवान भाइयों को और अपने समाज को पढ़ता है सर आपका उसमें इंटरव्यू करना चाहिए ठीक है थैंक यू ओके लिसन लेट मी टेल यू दिस हैपेंस टू एवरीबॉडी हाँ आई मीन एवरी सिंगल पर्सन इंक्लूडिंग माय सेल्फ एवरी नाउ एंड देन गेट्स नर्वस सो डोंट डोंट वरी अबाउट इट रिलैक्स या डू यू व uh, next, we have Nazeeb Ur Rahman from University of Delhi. Nazeeb? Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Nazeeb Ur Rahman, Delhi University, I'm doing PhD. What do you want to do? I'm doing PhD in Delhi University. What department? Urdu department, sir. Urdu, Urdu. Sir, I want to say to you, sir. Sir, when this government has come to this government for five years, जब से सरकार आई है मुल्क में नफरत खौफ दहशत डर का माहौल खत्म होने का नाम नहीं ले रहा अब तो यह हाल है कि हमारी एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन जो हैं वहाँ से भी लोगों को गायब कर दिया जाता है कभी और कुछ लोगों को फांसी में मजबूर किया जाता है फांसी के फंदे पर चढ़ रहे हैं और वहाँ का जो माहौल तैयार किया जा रहा है कुछ इन कैंपसों को दहशत का अड्डा करार देने की पूरी पूरी कोशिश हो रही है लोग उसके पीछे पड़े हुए हैं तो सर मुल्क की निगाहें आप पर टिकी हुई हैं मुल्क के नौजवान आपको आप मसीहा नजर आ रहे हैं कल अगर आपकी हुकूमत आती है और इन आएगी तो सर इसको आप इस वक्त हाल को कैसे टैकल करेंगे सर देखिए हिंदुस्तान में मैसेज प्रधानमंत्री देता है जो प्रधानमंत्री कहता है बोलता है जो उसकी फीलिंग होती है वो ट्रांसमिट होती है पूरे सिस्टम में तो जो ये नफरत की सिचुएशन है नफरत का माहौल है अगर प्राइम मिनिस्टर क्लियर मैसेज दे कि हिंदुस्तान एक है हिंदुस्तान में सब लोग एक हैं हिंदुस्तान में प्यार और भाईचारा होना चाहिए हिंदुस्तान अपने आप ठंडा हो जाएगा ये ना कि नेचुरल चीज है इस देश की इस देश का जो इतिहास है और इस देश की हिस्ट्री अगर किसी ने पढ़ी हो तो ये भाईचारे प्यार का देश है ये नफरत का देश नहीं तो ये इसकी नेचुरल क्वालिटी है कि ये हमारे लोग एक दूसरे से मतलब अच्छी तरह बर्ताव करना चाहते हैं प्यार से रहना चाहते हैं तो अगर लीडरशिप डायरेक्शन देगी ऑटोमेटिकली वो थोड़ा अपने आप ठंडा होगा और दूसरी बात जो मैंने कही थी जो लोगों में गुस्सा आ रहा है देखिए मैं कुछ दिन पहले जो ये हमारे सीआरपीएफ के जवान शहीद हुए उनके मैं घर गया और रास्ते पे शामली तक ढाई घंटे गाड़ी में गए और रास्ते में बेरोजगार युवा एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक 
पूछो भैया क्या करते हो कुछ नहीं करते क्या करते हो कुछ नहीं करते क्या करते हो कुछ नहीं करते तो अगर जब तक जॉब के क्राइसिस को ठीक नहीं किया जाएगा तब तक नफरत नहीं जाने वाली तो ये इसका दो सोल्यूशन है एक आप जॉब के क्राइसिस को रिजोल्व करो किसानों के दिल में जो डर है उसको मिटाओ और फिर भाईचारे की बात करो और सबको एक साथ ले जाने की कोशिश करो ऑटोमेटिकली हिंदुस्तान चालू हो जाएगा शुरू काम करना शुरू कर देगा राहुल सर सर अदर क्वेश्चन लाइक यू हैव सीन मेनी वॉयेंसेज इन योर पर्सनल लाइफ ऑल्सो सो हाउ दे शेप योर लाइफ You can elaborate. So, I am. I am actually. When I went to um, Shamli, I went to speak to the two families, and when I was talking to one of the boys, I suddenly realized, when I was talking to him, that my father had also been killed by a bomb. You know, it was something. While I was talking, I suddenly realized, oh, I have been in this. young man's place so i felt that i could i knew what it felt like to be where he was i knew what it felt like to have your father blown to pieces i've seen it and i've i've seen with my grandmother also shot 32 bullets so i've grown up with that and what i told him was that look those who have understood those who have felt violence will never think of violence as a solution wo na naturally agar aap mujhe kaho aur mere family ke do members ki hatya hui hai agar aap mujhe kaho ki hinsa se ya aap theek cheez theek kar sakte ho main aapko immediately jawab dunga hinsa se theek nahi ho sakti hinsa ko हिंसा को हिंसा कभी नहीं काट सकती है हिंसा को सिर्फ प्यार काट सकता है और कुछ नहीं काट सकता है आप मुझ पे हिंसा करेंगे मैं आप पे हिंसा करूंगा आप मुझ पे हिंसा करेंगे आप मुझ पे चलता जाएगा और ये देश की आप हिस्ट्री देखेंगे गांधी जी बुद्धा महावीर पीछे जाइए जितना जाना चाहते हैं अशोक आपको दिखेगा कि इस देश ने इस देश का मैसेज हिंसा को आप सिर्फ प्यार से काट सकते हो प्यार का इस्तेमाल करो प्यार हिंसा को एकदम मिटा देगा और यही यही फिलॉसफी थी आपने देखा होगा यही फिलॉसफी थी नरेंद्र मोदी जी मुझे एक के बाद एक एक, एक के बाद एक पार्लियामेंट हाउस में मतलब मेरे परिवार के बारे में बोल रहे थे मैं जाके गले लग गया <laughs> मेरा कहना था बोलो जितना बोलना है अब आपके दिल में आपके दिल में गुस्सा है नफरत है मैं उसको क्यों पकड़ू मेरे दिल में तो नहीं है मैं तो आपके आके गले लग रहा हूं और आप अपनी लाइफ में भी कोशिश करिए आप अपनी लाइफ में देखिए आप ट्राई कीजिए जादू है ये जादू की सबसे जादू है मैं बता रहा हूं आपसे कभी क्लास में या कहीं कोई नफरत करता है तो आप उसकी नफरत को एक्सेप्ट मत करो उससे जाके गले लग जाओ उससे प्यार से बात करो देखो क्या होता है आप बिलीव नहीं करोगे आप बिलीव नहीं करोगे इसका इंपैक्ट कैसे जाता है मतलब मैं आपको बताता हूं फिजिकली जब मैंने मोदी जी से गले लगा जब मैं गले लगा एक्चुअली उनकी बॉडी में मैंने फील किया कि ये क्या हुआ ये कैसे हुआ मुझे मुझे प्यार कैसे किसी ने दिखा दिया क्योंकि रियलिटी है मैं आपको बताता हूं देखिए समझने की बात है मेरे नरेंद्र मोदी जी से कोई नफरत नहीं रियलिटी की बात है कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी को उनकी फीलिंग है कि कि उनको जो शायद प्यार मिलना चाहिए था
जब मैं आपको बताता हूं जब मेरी दादी मरी जब मेरी दादी की डेथ हुई तो मेरे पापा बंगाल में थे और फ्रेंकली मेरी जो दादी थी वो मेरे लिए एक प्रकार से मेरी मां से भी ज्यादा थी क्योंकि मेरी मां थोड़ी स्ट्रिक्ट थी मेरी मां मतलब डिसिप्लिनेरियन थी घर में और मेरी दादी के पीछे मैं जाके छुप जाता था तो एक प्रकार से मुझे प्रोटेक्शन मिलता था जब मेरी दादी मरी तो मैं बिल्कुल डिस्टर्ब डिस्टर्ब हुआ और पापा बंगाल में थे और मुझे काफी गुस्सा था अंदर जब मेरी दादी की हत्या हुई क्योंकि मेरी दादी की हत्या आप आपको मालूम हो ना हो ना हो मगर मेरी दादी की हत्या उनके सिक्योरिटी वालों ने की थी और वो सिक्योरिटी वाले मुझे जानते थे एक्चुअली एक प्रकार से मेरे दोस्त थे मुझे मतलब सतवंत सिंह ने जिसने मुझे मेरी दादी को गोली मारी उसने मुझे बैडमिंटन सिखाया तो मुझे गुस्सा था मगर जब मेरे पापा आए और मेरे पापा मुझसे गले लगे एकदम गुस्सा चला गया तो मेरा कहना है कि आप अपनी लाइफ में देखो आपसे कितना भी गुस्सा कर ले कितनी भी गाली लगा दे आप एक बार ट्राई करो जाके गले लग जाओ देखो क्या होता है आई थिंक सर अब जादू की जप्पी वाला फंडा सब अपनाएंगे नेक्स्ट वी हैव गौरव सोनी फ्रॉम श्री और कॉलेज गौरव सोनी जस्ट पास द माइक टू हिम लास्ट है गाइस और ये लास्ट क्वेश्चन है भाई एक दो और पूछने दो डोंट वरी वी विल मैनेज द टाइम ठीक है कैन वी डू अ लिटिल बिट मोर कौशल टाइम टेन मिनट गुड आफ्टरनून सर हाँ सही है एक्सक्यूज मी वेर यू नाउ सर या सर मैं ये पूछना चाहता हूँ राजनीतिक दलों के बारे में ये भैया थोड़ा बायस चल रहा है सब क्वेश्चंस यहीं से आ रहे हैं वहां से नहीं आ रहे पूछे पूछे देन विल विल कम देर हाँ सर हमारे देश के अंदर जो भ्रष्टाचार है वो बहुत एक बड़ा मुद्दा है ठीक है सारी पार्टीज एक दूसरे पर आरोप लगाती है कि भाई ये पार्टी भ्रष्ट है ये पार्टी भ्रष्ट है और अपने आप को बिल्कुल साफ बताते हैं तो जो इनकी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज की फंडिंग है वो आरटीआई के अंदर क्यों नहीं आती सर आज सर वन सेकंड आई वांट कम टू सर आज जो कॉलेज के अंदर जो बच्चे हैं सारे ये सारे यूथ हैं और पहली बार वोट देंगे दे विल गिव वोट फर्स्ट टाइम सॉरी सर ये क्या सोच के दें अगर कोई पार्टीज अपनी फंडिंग छुपा रही है कि कहाँ से उनके पास पैसा आ रहा है अगर वो करोड़ों रुपये लगा कर इलेक्शन लड़ रहे हैं ठीक है आपने पैसे निकालेंगे और कमाई करेंगे और फिर अगले इलेक्शन के लिए इकट्ठे करेंगे और हम कैसे मान लेंगे वो हमारा भला करने के लिए आ रहे हैं वो तो देखिए ट्रांसपेरेंसी बढ़नी चाहिए सेंट परसेंट मगर आपको एक बात एक बात समझनी है कि जो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है वो जनता का इंस्टीट्यूशन है पॉलिटिकल पार्टी इज ए इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू जुडिशरी प्रेस पॉलिटिशियंस ब्यूरोक्रैट्स दीज आर ऑल इंस्टीट्यूशन अगर आप आरटीआई इन पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज की बात करते हैं तो देन वाई नॉट आरटीआई इन जुडिशरी वाई नॉट आर टी आई इन प्रेस वाई नॉट आर टी आई इन ब्यूरोक्रेसी फॉर इंडिविजुअल ब्यूरोक्रैट सो आई एम ऑल फॉर ट्रांसपेरेंसी बट द क्वेश्चन इज इट हैज टू बी अप्लाइड अक्रॉस द बोर्ड बिकॉज इफ इट इज अप्लाइड इन पोलिटिकल पार्टीज ओनली देन यू विल वीकन द पोलिटिकल पार्टीज इन रिस्पेक्ट टू ऑल द अदर इंस्टीट्यूशन आई एम वेरी हैप्पी आई एम वेरी हैप्पी to put rti into political parties without a problem i'll do it tomorrow morning if rti is done 
in other institutions in the country, judiciary, press. I also want to put RTI, if you're going to put RTI in political party, I also want to put it in the top 20 businessmen of this country. I want to understand what they're doing. But I am more than happy. I am more than happy to put RTI in political parties as long as we are doing it for other institutions. Because if you fundamentally weaken political parties as compared to other institutions, you're weakening the people of India. Now, next point. There are multiple ways in which you can attack corruption. Number one, Lokpal bill. There is a Lokpal bill with a man, independent man, who is allowed to investigate. That is not being allowed here under Mr. Narendra Modi. Now let's talk about RTI. Today, the RTI law itself has been demolished by the government. State after state after state doesn't have a RTI, a man in charge of RTI. Gujarat didn't have an RTI. Nahi. Are bhai, RTI to hum lai na. RTI to Congress party Manmohan Singh ji lai. Second, second, agar aap sachmuch mein corruption ki baat karna chaate hain, sabse bada corruption kis mein hota hai? सबसे बड़ा करप्शन हिंदुस्तान में लैंड में होता है इस बात से आप सहमत हैं कि जमीन में सबसे ज्यादा करप्शन उत्तर प्रदेश में मायावती जी की सरकार थी 3000 एकड़ जमीन 3000 एकड़ जमीन किसान से लेके फटाक मतलब रेस ट्रैक बनाने के लिए दे दिए याद है आपको उसकी मतलब अनलिमिटेड वैल्यू हम लैंड एक्विजिशन बिल लाए लैंड एक्विजिशन बिल में साफ लिखा था कि अगर आपने लैंड अक्वायर करनी है तो आपको किसान से पूछना पड़ेगा अगर आप लैंड अक्वायर करना चाहते हो तो आपको किसान को चार चार बार ज्यादा ड्रेट देना पड़ेगा नरेंद्र मोदी ने पहला काम क्यों किया इसको रद्द करने का पहला काम लैंड एक्विजिशन बिल को रद्द करना है क्यों क्योंकि वो जमीन हिंदुस्तान की जमीन हिंदुस्तान के आदिवासियों की जमीन किसानों की जमीन इन्हीं पचास लोगों को देना चाहते हैं सबसे हाई लेवल भ्रष्टाचार और मैंने इतनी पिटाई खाई है मैं आपको बता रहा हूं मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ये सब लग गए मेरे पीछे जिस दिन मैंने लैंड एक्विजिशन बिल का काम शुरू किया जिस दिन मैं भट्टा परसोल गया उस दिन से मेरी पिटाई शुरू हो गई मैं बता रहा हूं आपको धड़ाधड़ 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 क्या कर रहा है इसको रोको तो आप बिटवीन द लाइन भी थोड़ा देखिए सबसे ज्यादा भ्रष्टाचार लैंड एक्विजिशन में राहुल गांधी लैंड एक्विजिशन बिल को रिफॉर्म करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं उधर नरेंद्र मोदी उसको कैंसिल कर रहे हैं पिटाई राहुल गांधी की हो रही है छोटा सा सवाल आपको क्या लगता है जो भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ लड़ेगा उसको पिटाई होगी हां या ना होगी ना जो भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ नहीं लड़ेगा उसको पिटाई नहीं होगी ना मीडिया देख लो पिटाई किसकी हो रही है मेरी या मोदी जी की सीधी सी बात है तो वेदर इट इज लैंड एक्विजिशन वेदर इट इज आरटीआई वेदर इट इज नारेगा दीज आर ऑल थैंक यू थैंक यू आई लाइक टू कंक्लूड ऑन दिस आठ बजे प्रधानमंत्री आते हैं कहते हैं भाइयों और बहनों भाइयों और बहनों पांच सौ रुपए का हजार रुपए का नोट मुझे अच्छा नहीं लगता मुझे दो हजार रुपए का अच्छा लगता है मैं नोटबंदी करूंगा सबसे पहले सबको लाइन में खड़ा कर दिया छोटा सा सवाल आपसे लाइन में अनिल अंबानी जी खड़े थे मैंने तो नहीं देखा लाइन में ये बड़े बड़े बिजनेसमैन खड़े थे खड़े थे लाइन में काले धन वाले खड़े थे मैंने तो नहीं देखा लाइन में आप लोग खड़े थे हाँ आप काले धन वाले हो आप चोर हो नहीं 
तो ईमानदार लोग लाइन के सामने क्यों खड़े थे चोर छुपे हुए छुपे चुप, क्यों थे क्योंकि नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने आपके जेब में से पैसा निकालकर उनके जेब में डाला है एंड आप देख लेना अच्छी तरह सुन लीजिए हिंदुस्तान की हिस्ट्री में सबसे बड़ा घोटाला हिंदुस्तान की हिस्ट्री में सबसे बड़ा घोटाला नोटबंदी देख लेना एक दिन एक दिन यह सच्चाई निकलेगी गारंटी करके आपको कह रहा हूं एक दिन यह सच्चाई निकलेगी नोटबंदी वॉज द बिगेस्ट कैम इन इंडिया हिस्ट्री आई वॉन्ट टू लीव यू विद वन मैसेज आई वॉन्ट टू लीव यू विद वन मैसेज सी सम ऑफ यू सम ऑफ यू माइट लाइक मी सम ऑफ यू माइट नॉट लाइक मी सम ऑफ यू माइट बी न्यूट्रल टू मी बट आई वॉन्ट टू लीव यू विद वन मैसेज हु एवर यू आर सपोर्टिंग has to have the guts to come here in front of you and stand here in front of you and talk to you and listen to you oh if he doesn't have the guts to come here and stand and talk to you and embrace you and listen to you you need to question why he doesn't have the guts to come here that's a simple thing i want to finally tell you that you are our future we are depending on you you do not even understand you do not even understand how much we believe in you you do not even understand that we are absolutely convinced that you are going to take this country forward and you are going to make this the number one country in the world so you need to act with confidence you need to act with self belief and most importantly when someone tries to divide india when someone tries to abuse somebody when someone tries to beat somebody in front of you defend him with your love and affection thank you very much have a nice day thank you hello thank, thank you, you so much.